Good morning. Uh, figured today I would just kind of do a quick walkthrough of what I did for my uh, my yard setup here. I did post, or I recorded a few bunch of videos uh, of everything that I was doing out here, and um, <clears throat> it ended up being like 20 minutes with you know my cheap snap clip editing. So I said, you know what, I could put this in a little bit of a smaller format for you guys. So that's what I'm gonna do right now is we're just gonna kind of walk through um, just for my holiday decoration. I know I made a pretty long video for the Halloween one. This one will just be for Christmas. I'll touch on some of the things I've done here, some little um, tweaks here and there and fixes I've done just to make things work and, and kind of how I go about my operation. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So the first thing I like to do is, honestly, I really try to just get some type of a, a cohesiveness if you will and that's probably a business term but I, I don't mind it being a little bit messy if you will um, in terms of different things all around the yard but I do try to keep things similar so when I say that it's more of you know if I'm gonna use white lights on all the shrubs I use the same brand size types of lights I don't have a strand of color or half a strand of white or whatever have you if I do inflatables I try to keep them either in a certain area or matching of a certain type um, and if you look over there, so the Santa and the Globe are one. That snowman's been around for a while, but they do match pretty well, so they look almost like they're one big set. So we put that together. Um, I actually fixed that snowman, so I'm gonna show you what I did for him uh, coming up as we get a little closer. I got the reindeer in the front, and you know I put a couple of things like the elf, the toy soldier, we'll walk up to those guys as well. But again, the other thing here is I really, I like to go for a little bit more of like a 3D effect, if you will, on the yard. So you see, you got stuff right in the front, some in the middle, going up the driveway, and then along the house, which you'll see at night when I, uh, I flip over to the night video I took um, just the other day. And then obviously over here, a little bit of work with our flagpole, making it like a candy cane, and then my blue mold Santa, just something off to the side of the house. So we'll walk through the fill, and then you'll be able to see... Uh, how it all works. Move along. So first up, we'll touch on the flagpole. Obviously, I took on the flags. I took the solar light down. Um, and what I did is I bought C6 LED. They're the faceted. So they got the uh, the diamond shaping to it, which kind of helps with a little bit of the light dispersion. Um, I took two strands of these, and I actually mounted them at the very top of the flagpole uh, line. So I put one at the very top and the other one about a foot down. And then once that was all tied up, I just wrapped and wrapped and wrapped all the way down here. So that's how we took care of that. Looks really nice at night. Makes it look like a candy cane pole going up. Um, and when you come up the street, it's one of the first things you see. So it's kind of like a little bit of a beacon. The next guy here is our blow mold Santa. So Santa here was actually found on the side of the road. Someone was uh, getting rid of him as part of their big pickup. So we actually uh, grabbed him on a whim. And one of the things in here, I'm gonna get inside here so you can see. If you look down there, there's the zoom in. It's just a regular bulb, an LED bulb actually. So what I had done here is, it's just to give this light, because it didn't have a light through the hole here, is I used what I call my pumpkin light. So I had found this out a few years ago. So I came and bought a um, just a four inch round, um, conduit box like a, a light box that you would put in like a basement or any type of other um you know in the drywall for mounting a light from there we put that ceramic bulb base on that you usually get fine in a garage or in an attic or a dry or a basement um, and that ceramic base had a couple contacts in it so obviously you run the wire in to the conduit box wire it up to the ceramic and the wire i used is actually nothing more than just a short extension cord um, so I just cut off the actual outlet end and strip the wires, put them right in, and there you go. And that gives off a ton of light. Surprisingly enough, I also did that over there with the snowman, um, and I'll get to over that in a sec. We'll talk about that. Next up, candy canes. Uh, these came in packs of four. Um, they're pretty nice to have. They're just, you stake them in and they line up pretty nice and evenly. I'm kind of a stickler with those two. I like to make sure they're as neat as possible. Um, <clears throat> maybe it's my OCD, but you know, when you see them and they're leaning over, they're half done. They just, I don't know. Some of it just looks like there's not a ton of effort put into those when people put certain things up. So I try to make sure that, um, you know, I make it as presentable as possible, if you will. Next up, we're going to talk about the, uh, the reindeer. Pick those up on a on a sale just a pack of three they're they're glitter which i absolutely can't stand so they sit in their own box 
and uh, they light up with just some soft white LEDs. But uh, yeah, those work out pretty well. They kind of just help add to the uh, the effect, it's something that the kids wanted to get last year. So we got it. Let's talk about these inflatables. So the next thing is the inflatables. And so like I said, they're two separate. You got the Santa snow glow and the twinkling lights and uh, Toy Soldier there uh, rotates. It's pretty neat. And I got my snowman. So now with this guy, he we've had for a few years, he had the three of those cool white LEDs staggered in him and they were never really that bright. Um, and then they finally just started kind of crapping out. So this one is, as you can see right there, even though it's daytime, is uh, soft white. So warm white, if you will. So what I actually did is for him, I couldn't find, they have them online. Um, they do sell the chip sets that you can buy and you can string in and wire them in there pretty easily. But when it came to warm white, I couldn't find any that were like under 50 bucks. So everything is cool white or colored or whatever. And I just, I wanted the warm white. Well, I ended up taking one of those pumpkin lights like the one I used in the Santa Bloom mold that I showed you. And I put it right down in the base there and you can kind of see them in there right now. And now that lights up this whole guy at night, which is pretty cool. So snow globe, snow globe and the inflatables are up. They're wired in, easy, easy, and uh, we're moving on. So don't mind the, uh, the mess. There's no mulch or anything back here right now. It's just dirt. I did a lot of cleanup here. Um, I took out all of the fabric because this is all gonna be camp down and refabric and I'm putting stone out here in the spring. That being said, I did go ahead and do some uplighting. So one of the things I liked as part of the 3D effect, you have your bulbs, you have all this stuff out in the yard, but I did uplighting. So you can see I got red, green, then another red, green, and then another red, green on the garage as well, on both doors of the garage. So the whole house at night has this red and green striping effect going, which is really nice. Um, you know, a lot of things nowadays people are doing up lighting, LED landscape lighting, low voltage stuff because it's gotten a lot easier to do um, and less expensive. But this to me is a really nice kind of feature. I did it in Halloween. Um, you might have seen I had like the purple and the yellows up around the house. So, um, but I just, I started doing this last year and I've expanded it to just be the whole house. And I really like what it does. It's a nice effect. It's simple to do, makes a big impact. Um, so yeah, so we just wired in a bunch of those. And again, I use a few different things to make these connections. I'll tell you about those right now and show you. So when I connected all these together, I used some uh, three to one to three. So you can see there's one there. It's got the, the cross shape, or you can do one like this. That kind of spaces them out. They sell ones that are five as well, but those ones work for me. And I got the short 10 foot extension cords, just kind of connecting those lights in. A lot of it runs through a box like this. Those things can come with three, five plugs, whatever they stake into the ground. They work really well. And then those run right up to my controller box. So I actually bought this this year, Ring One. So I plugged it all in. It's got the bridge um, that it came with as a, as a package deal. And that is what controls all these lights. The Ring is really nice because it's got two separate outlets and you can control each one individually. Not that I need to worry about that right now, but uh, it's kind of nice to, uh, to have that feature. And again, as you know, this is the new box that we had wired in. It's in the, uh, the other video I have when I deal with wiring outdoor uh, GFIs. Then you come up here, there's my soldier. And the other thing that I want to point out with connections is over here. I try not to walk too, too much. But if you come over here and you look inside this plant, you can see I plugged a regular extension cord, a three prong in the black to the two prongs on uh, the female end on these lights. Now you might know most Christmas lights, um, their plugs are two thin prongs. They don't have a thick and a thin. So one of the things you can't usually do is plug in a regular plug or an outlet to it. So these guys here, you can buy a couple versions of these. This will take a three prong and turn it into a two prong. It's basically all it does. Um, so what it actually does, you can see gray ones and red ones. The gray ones you find are just a standard um, three to two and it's got a thick and a thin blade on the end here. This one, this red one actually has two thin blades. So it plugs right into the Christmas tree strand and allows you to then plug an outlet to it 
to run wire and I've got that going down here so that my elf can plug in and all the candy cane lights. So super useful, super helpful. Um, you know, again, these are all cheap. These, these, the end connectors, the boxes, they're just a few bucks a piece, not a big deal. Uh, the last thing I want to show you over here though, is where you see all these little pieces of foam pipe insulation. That was a new one this year I put up. So one of the things that really bothers me, as you probably see, I have a little bit of OCD with the way things kind of are set up, the way they look, the presentation, um, is at night, if you've got strands of lights that connect bushes, sometimes you'll drive by a house, you'll see, you know, they got a shrub, then all of a sudden they just have like a little droop of wires that run to the next shrub, or they've got wires that run across a part of the roof that doesn't really line up. And so it just looks off. Um, not criticizing that at all. I just know what I like. So one of the things that happened here is these lights I kept connecting from strand to strand to these uh, boxwoods here to kind of fill them in. And right here is where there's lights. So I'm gonna flip this camera around and show you exactly uh, what we ended up doing. So I literally went to Home Depot for a quick fix and I bought just some three quarter inch pipe insulation, foam pipe insulation as you can see. And if I turn it and you look in there, you can see there's the bulbs, see? All I did is I took this pipe insulation and I tucked it in and I did it all the way across for all of those strands. So that way at night, yeah, you can see it at the day, um, but you can see the extension cords and everything else. I'm not keen on burying everything and, you know, making it all kinds of uh, fancy, but at night you do not see the bulbs anymore. So it's hidden. So it looks like each bush has its own strand and that they're not connected in any way, which is kind of nice for me. Uh, again, just a pet peeve of mine it was an easy fix those were like two bucks a piece for a six foot pipe piece of pipe uh insulation at home depot so worth it for me i think just something you might want to think about and i think finally um the only two things i i did that modified actually are these two guys up here so you see those two wreaths these are uh 48 inch they were pre-lit wreaths um so what actually happened with these is over the years um, those wreaths have um, had bulbs go out, they've had strands go out on them, and those are usually helped in with these little plastic clips all over the place. So instead of trying to buy a new wreath, because those big ones can get expensive, they could be anywhere from $80 to $150 plus, depending on, you know, what brand, what type, things like that. So what I actually ended up doing here, um, and I'll step back so they both get in the shot. What I actually ended up doing here is I took last year, I took all the lights off of them, the old incandescents. I ripped them all off. I cut all the wires off, threw it all out. And I bought two strands of um, 200 lights each of the mini lights. So, and I'll talk about the types of lights I used on these and the shrubs in a minute. But I restranded them all and I retired them all back in, you know, using the, the, the bendable uh, parts of the wreath, bent it all back into place and hung them back up and now they work perfectly and they match so next thing i'm going to get into though that's just a quick little thing i did but again made a huge difference saved me money and time um and low effort too so that worked out really well let's talk about the types of lights that i have on the rest of the house real quick so starting with the shrubs these are sylvanias they are a c6 bulb um and you can see they're a little bit smaller than the c9 but they have that same type of teardrop uh shape to them the candelabra shape if you will um and they're faceted just like the ones over on the flagpole uh, again just helps with how that light is just kind of dispersed and, and how it goes out and these are warm white leds and so when i bought these i bought enough strands to do everything i wanted to do around the house so i've got all the shrubs and trees that i want to do including that guy um, and it works really well. They look great um, and they match, right? So I'm not sitting here trying to fight with, you know, making sure a strand matches or doesn't matches or the color's not quite right. And I actually did the same thing up there as I bought, those are Sylvanias. Those are mini lights though. And they are, um, same thing. They have a facet to them. So if you look closely, you can see they have a facet, same type of deal, that diamonded pattern, make them just kind of shine up a little bit better. Um, but I've done that throughout the whole house um, where I put the white lights on just to kind of make everything seem or look similar. The other thing I got going on is these lights, like I showed you before, I talked about the floodlights. Those are just par 38 floods. Um, I believe they're eight watts each, but um, you can get those again, Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon, anywhere. They're, they're like usually nine or 10 bucks a piece. 
um, well worth it. Again, my toy soldier here, who I picked up at the grocery store. Actually, he was on a clearance sale, but he's kind of a fun little guy to have. They, they tuck away easily. They, they look nice where they are. I actually also grabbed the elf this year because he kind of matches out with the toy soldier. He's got that same kind of vibe going for him. And you can see here he is at the top of my driveway. Same deal, same type of lights, same kind of charactering as the uh, toy soldier back there. And that again was on sale at Big Lots, which actually Big Lots, great place to get Christmas stuff. They usually have a really good deals um, and they do have some fun things there if you get there early enough. So moving on. And I've always had a problem with that because honestly, for me, Christmas doesn't start until after Thanksgiving. So for me to go out again, same thing with Halloween, right? Halloween for me is October. Um, and so when you start seeing things in August, uh, start coming out for Halloween. And then when Halloween is just about to be done, people start throwing Christmas together. Like it just drives me bonkers because I'm not in the mood to do it. I'm not looking for things at that point in time. And when I do start looking around is when everything is either on sale and not available anymore because they mark it down to clear it out. Or, you know, you go to the store and there's just really, again, nothing available. So bothers me a little bit because I feel like right now, uh, you know, Thanksgiving going into Christmas season is when all the Christmas stuff should be out so you can get to it. I don't shop that far ahead, but again, that's just my own fault. It's my own way my brain is wired. I just can't get in the season in the mood for it. So that's what happens. However, that's where we are. I'm going to show you all of this tonight. I will, uh, I think I did a video the other night, but at that point, the garage was not lit up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, reshoot that and get you one with the, uh, the garage. All right. Talk to you soon. All right. Everything's up. Everything is lit up. Everything looks fantastic. And I couldn't be happier with how everything turned out, uh, especially since I decided this year just to add the red and the green over there and here. Um, I did take a video of this lat the other night before I did all this. Um, and I probably mentioned it in my, my walkthrough when I kind of shortened up my walkthrough a little bit. Um, and so I figured I'd do another one because it's cleaner. Uh, it's cleaner now. It's all done. And so it kind of flows with the, uh, the capture, but we'll take a quick walk around here and we'll just talk about everything we did. But again, as you can see, I'm just hoping my, my ring light doesn't go off and don't mind. I got a street light here that never turns off with the led, but I will step out of the picture here and you can see, let me turn that. There we go. That captures pretty much everything. Looks pretty good. It's got a nice 3D effect to it. That's really what I wanted to go for. So let's do a quick walkthrough at night here just so you can see everything. All right, so right off the bat, like I said, when you come up the street, there's my little candy cane-ish stripe pole uh, with the red and whites. There is my light up Santa. Very bright, that's that bulb I was telling you about that is in there. And if I can finish the zoom around in a little bit of a brighter spot you'll see him better his features come out pretty good he looks pretty nice there and then you go around you have your candy canes to go all the way up the driveway just again adding a little depth the deer the reindeer right out in front the family of reindeer and then we come right over here and there's the snowman as you can see that that light that I put at the base of him really does pay off you got your toy soldier waving at you inside the snow globe there and they have the little uh, flickering lights to make it look like uh, like a snow globe. Pretty nifty. And like I said, for this globe here, you can actually see it in the back there. There's the LED. That's about what I got compared to this guy. So like I said, it makes a big difference for me. It's more visible now um, with that light in there. Those LEDs were super dim to begin with. And then we've got our up lighting on the house. And we've got obviously there's the candles and the windows little led battery operated candles that i have put those in the windows i've got my wreaths all lit up along with all of my trees including that one over there and as you can see as i get closer to this again you didn't see the lights going between there so we don't have to worry about that anymore because we've hidden those as you can see, there they are. You can see them right in there. 
not a problem anymore. Completely hidden and they look really nice from the street. So, and my flood just went on. I have my other green light there. Like I said, I was really happy to have the, uh, the additional there from one side to the other, that really paid off. And then of course, you've got your soldier up there. And last but not least, is our little elf buddy. There he goes, perfect. Like I said, I'm really happy with it. Everything turned out well. So uh, there we go. Again, I like to say sometimes I live vicariously through my children. So this is me, yes, doing it for myself as an adult because I love doing it. Um, but I also do it a lot for my children as well because I love to look on their faces. I love that they get excited for it. Um, they get to be a part of it. They get to pick out certain things, where things go sometimes. Um, and they like to help out. So again, it's just something I enjoy doing and I think the efforts pay off. So I hope you picked up a thing or two. I hope you guys have an awesome Christmas and I will talk to you soon. Take care.